Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody, Militiaman and Crew. It is the Friday afternoon, and it's one of those wonderful summer months. I hope everybody's having a great day um, and staying cool because I think we're getting a heat wave right everywhere. But the cool part is, is the heat wave too is in Iraq because a lot of things that have been happening, not just in Iraq, but around the world are um, phenomenal. Um, there's interesting like bits and pieces about different countries doing different things. Um, specifically, there's like some uh, talk about digital um, uh, transformations for specific countries around the world. And they're kind of like similarly um, mirroring each other. Uh, so I guess, you know, Iraq, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, there's many stuff, many places, right, that seem to be following along in this uh, line of thinking is that this digital world we're going to be in, or we are in now, is, is going to manifest into some bigger things. So I'm not going to get into the global situation as far as that's concerned with other countries and other studies because that's not what I do. But just be aware that uh, Iraq is going to be about Iraq, but we're also going to be about an international uh, financial system. And one of the things that um, al Sudani has stated back in uh, 2023 and in subsequently early on in the 2024 is that Iraq's going to be part of that financial system and they're going to be part of that support. They're going to bring confidence. And we saw that in uh, UN assembly meeting. We saw it in Davao. We saw it other places and we still see it today. So those are some of the things that we're going to talk about. Well, no, we've already talked about most of that. But the bottom line is Iraq is moving forward and going into an international circumstance. And what I mean by circumstance that they're going to actually have to uh, pony up. We have some data that shows that they're going to have some meetings here this next week uh, on or around the 18th and um, they're, they're going to be uh, talked about in a historic manner, a very formal manner and that formal manner is going to mean something so I'll get to that as well. So stick around and enjoy and please if you guys have the opportunity to join us with uh, Militiaman at patreon.com forward slash mm and crew please come on in, you're welcome. Check out our Discord with Militia Man's chat room. Uh, you get daily information from uh, from me, and you get daily information from our uh, news source, uh, Samson. And um, it's great because why? Because we get it 24/7 effectively. So we get a little mix of both uh, late at night in the United States time, and compared to um, offshore and overseas, uh, time differentials are important. So. Coincidentally, uh, it works out great. So um, you can be up bright and early in uh, the East Coast, or you can be uh, just getting up like they do in Pacific Coast time, like Petra, for instance. He gets to sleep in. So anyway, um, here's an article today. It's called Representative of the Framework. It says the 2024 budget will be returned to the House of Representatives, and the reason is revealed. There's been some talk about this on the Internet. My view is the 2024 budget tables that they're saying will be returned to the House of Representatives to make minor amendments to them. So my view is it, how significant is this? Um, it could be really powerfully significant if in fact that those minor amendments are, or amendment is pot, has to do with their exchange rate. But in the meantime, the, the point being is, is that the 2023-2024 budget has been approved and voted on and even in the Gazette as of I think it's June 2023 and uh, it allows for the government to make amendments to things and so effectively um, is this a constitutional thing um, I don't think so I think they've actually it's a minor amendments it has nothing to do with uh, being constitutionally um, outside of their block so Basically, what it's going to be to me is that there are minor amendments to budget schedules. The government has every right to amend them. Uh, I think that's what we've learned. I think that's in print. I pretty much know it. But hey, just yeah, everybody has to do their own study. But the bottom line is, is that amendments um, 
our, amend our amendments to the budget tables. They're not the constitutional issues. So um, keep that in mind. Tripartite budget was done June 2023. Allows for the government to do exactly what they're doing. And so I don't see that that is a smoking gun by any stretch of the means. However, it is very bright because it looks like they have um, something to talk about. And uh, we're going to see how that works in the short term. Anyway, the next thing I wanted to get to is is uh, is that there is the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Paris. It has the uh, headquarters in Iraq, and then what are they doing? They're working to digitize the economy and provide opportunity. And of course, that's what everybody's pretty much watching for: is that um, Iraq uh, is going to launch their new headquarters in the Chamber of Iraq from the French capital, which enhanced the spread of the network of chambers of conferences conference <laughs> chambers offices at the global level so global level iraq's going to be part of, of the global level and they basically say they'll they'll work to enhance the mission of the international chamber of commerce in iraq and strengthen the voice of iraq businessmen and chambers all over the world so it sounds like they're setting stage to go international are they not pretty much so now look their exposure now is going to be to about 45 million different businesses so Iraq is going to be basically like a, it's like going to be an open can, man. Everybody come on in and start feeding because that's effectively what they're doing. I mean, being exposed to 45 million businesses is just absolutely massive. Very good thing to see. Um, according to International Standards article, Financial Control announces the preparation of a draft of the updated Unified Accounting System. So Iraq has basically been doing what? We already talked about this. It's getting a little bit... Um, on in the day, but they are going with international standards and we all know that Ernst & Young has been involved with um, Iraq. It says they confirm that the preparation of a draft of the updated unified accounting system in accordance with international standards and like I just said, they're, they're going to an international systems and they're going to be part of it, so here they're talking about it. The Federal Board of Supreme Audit seeks to achieve its objectives specified by its founding law including developing the accounting and auditing professions in Iraq. So they're not only going to just change into a unified system, but they're also going to be preparing their citizens over time. All of this is just, you know, normal behavior uh, because uh, professional businesses, um, un uh, like in many different entities, have a continuing education. So when you're as a, I guess, even attorneys or tax advisors or um, even real estate people have to um, have continuing education, and I think that's what they're talking about. It says the Federal Board of Supreme Audit seeks to achieve its objectives specified by that founding law. So again, just remember, they're talking about auditing professions in the country of Iraq. The Bureau issued the Internal Control Guide, which was circulated to all government agencies for mandatory adoption starting from when? Beginning of this month, July 1st. It says the court has completed uh, preparing a draft of the updated unified accounting system in accordance with the international standards. So the court is involved. This draft has been circulated to government agencies, uh, unions, universities for the purpose of expressing their opinions and making appropriate amendments in the preparation for its actual implementation in the near future. Uh, they basically go on to say these steps come in a framework of the Bureau's commitment to developing um, and improving uh, the accounting and auditing professions in Iraq in line with international standards. So again, I guess, I guess you guys could probably pretty much get where they're going with this. Um, they're dealing with international organizations. I think basically, if um, in in kind of like you know off the cuff terms, uh, if you're going to run with the big dogs, um, you better start running because you're going to need to be playing by international compliance, international rules, and uh, if you want any credibility, you're going to have to do it the right way and be in compliance. And trust me, when it comes to compliance, um, people need to pay attention to because again, if you don't play by the rules, like like all those co those companies that were out there that were thinking that they would uh, strike, for instance, against doing the dollar transactions and stuff, um, they all obviously canceled their strike. Did they not? I'm sure they did. Because why? Because there's problems with it. In that sense, that means that you have a lot to lose if you're playing on the wrong side of the fence. And that's what I think what they were taking, talking about when that strike ended quickly like that.
Start selling dinars, or no wait, start selling dollars to travelers next week. A new procedures for transfers in Iraq. This was a couple days ago when we went over this. It says the central bank decided to grant exchange companies of category AB ability to register internal external remittances and activities via the FITR platform. There, it's open and in public. Uh, again, um, one of the things they talk about, just because we're rehashing this, the central bank restricts dollar grants to passengers at airports starting from July 14th. It says the document confirmed that exchange companies should transfer their dealings to one of the above mentioned banks no later than yesterday. Today's the 12th, yesterday was the 11th. And in addition, in addition to that, the above mentioned banks, they also talked about the exchange companies and those that are contracting with them. So that is a still, it's in the news again today. Just wanted to reiterate that, that we had that, um, I think it was a day, day or so ago. Um, but there's a report that's going to be out, I think it's tonight, that I'll talk about it a little bit. And um, credit where due, it was a good report, and that came from, I think, uh, Ariel and Goldilocks. So they, those guys, kudos to you guys. I appreciate you guys um, uh, shouting out on my end. I'll do the back to you guys because well done. Uh, the links and stuff that are provided that you guys give, I suggest everybody go and check them out and at least do your own research and see how that works out. So good job. Uh, foreign minister stresses to U.S. officials the importance of supporting financial and banking sector in Iraq. Uh, foreign, Faoud, uh, foreign Minister Faoud Hussein met with the U.S. Undersecretary of State for Political Administrative Affairs, John Bass, in Washington. Uh, what are they basically doing? They're talking about supporting the financial and banking sector. What else would they be doing, especially now? The minister stressed the importance of strengthening the U.S.-Iraq Iraqi relations in various fields uh, and the common desire to expand political economic cooperation between the two countries, including um, Iranian funds in Iraq. So I think there's something going on in the works with Iraq, Iran, and the money that's owed possibly for gas uh, transactions, etc. And it looks like the United States of America is willing to um, work to solve the issue. Um, basically, they're saying that the solution that they serves the, both interests, that's what they're hoping to, to get, and it says what they're looking for is to enhance financial stability in the region. Uh, you know, Iraq and Iran, they both are big, big trading partners, so having some sort of a deal would not be um, out of the question. I think it would be probably completely understandable that something needs to be done. It says, during the meeting, a special focus was placed on strengthening economic cooperation between the United States and Iraq. So that's their main focus. It says, the minister pointed out the importance of supporting the financial and banking sector in Iraq with a focus on the challenges related to the use of the dollar in financial transactions. So it's not just Iran, but it's also the United States dollar. How are you going to treat it? Well, are you going to be giving it back and forth to different countries? How are you doing that? Who's going to get them? Things of that nature, I'm sure. I think. Uh, dialogue and close cooperation, achieve common goals, enhance stability and development in the region. I think that one of the things that when they talk about enhanced stability and development in the region, I really do a lot of times think that they're not just talking about the military, they're talking about financial and banking, and that's why we're having these conversations about uh, the dollar, we're having conversations about platforms, electronic currency platforms. I think that you guys should understand that they're diff definitely working to that end and they're doing it quite quickly. And I think you all know too also that Ernst & Young is in the process of doing a um, mergers between the banks. We went over that in my last video. I suggest if you haven't focused in on it, go back, rewatch it. It'll be a good thing for you. It makes sense because what we're seeing is, is all of that coming to, to fruition. Uh, Fahoud is saying he's here in the United States in Washington. Uh, he goes on to say that at the moment, they have some um, other topics that they're talking about. Foreign minister talks about lots of different things, but one of the main things that he's talking about, um, about he's talking about North Atlantic Treaty with NATO. Um, they, they talk about again security and stability in the region. Okay, not just not just uh, militarily, but obviously I think in the banking side of things. Um, he. Uh, 
he denies some, some, some things in respect to Turkey. Um, he knows that there's some problems with the PKK. Okay, fine. Um, but there's no official decision to move um, entities into Iraq at this stage. Um, he's just, he hasn't seen any decisions on this. Um, having to relate to Hamas, I guess. But bottom line is, he goes into a different tone. He goes, he also noted that he will be holding meetings with the officials of the United States Treasury Department to discuss United States Iraqi relations in the economic field. The problems that are existing between the Central Bank of Iraq and the Ministry of Finance with the Treasury Department. So they obviously have still they have their feet in the fire. The United States Treasury is involved with Iraq like like no other, and obviously we can see that um, there's no doubt that um, the Foreign Minister Hussein he would not m meet or would not miss an opportunity to talk to the U.S. Treasury at this stage of the game while he's here in, the, in America, in Washington, I think it's pretty powerful. So let's see what he has to say and how that rolls out in the next uh, few hours or days, okay? It says on this particular article, it says, Iraq, the interstate transformations and the relationship with Washington. Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudani, he basically goes on was seeking to bring about a qualitative shift in the relationship between Baghdad and Washington. Kind of reiterating what this last article says. He's been seeking to uh, bring about a qualitative shift in the relationship between Baghdad and Washington. Qualitative meaning better, good, uh, to move towards what? multiple partnerships in several fields so they want to do their something different not just military but they want to go to that bilateral or multiple partnerships um, in in uh, what business economics all that kind of stuff he says mr. al Sudani seemed more willing to reach an understanding and present conditions that were not previously proposed in drawing up the relationship between the two parties including financial guarantees for loans remember the sovereign guarantees we talked about the banks, J.P. Morgan, Citibank potentially, um, and others involved, uh, but those loan guarantees, um, I think they're gonna be really a big component. And other financial exchanges that were not clear in the exchange between Iraq and America. So they have other stuff that they're talking about, they're just not quite quoting it, what they're about, but I would assume if they're talking about sovereign guarantees and a few other things, I think they're probably really important. Um, and they just probably just haven't shared it with us yet. Um, it says it's necessary for the United States of America to seek withdrawal of all its forces from Iraq. Uh, they want to find a suitable ground and enhance trust between Baghdad in order to create a partnerships built on the basis of trust. So again, back to the bilateral relationship, they probably want to um, try to get to that stage where um, that security aspect and that uh, sovereignty of not having U.S. forces on the ground, at least in combat ready stuff, um, to be done with. They can work and uh, have security um, in other ways. And going into an economic situation, I think the United States is going to want some guarantees and just as Iraq would want um, guarantees and or any other country that's involved with the country to rebuild it. Okay, then they go on to say it seems that the Shia coordination framework has expressed its acceptance. Okay, so the Shia and the Sunnis, al-Sudani's economic plan, especially since it seeks to create balanced economic relations with the United States of America. So the whole country as a whole, Iraq, right, wants to have relationship, and it sounds like there's a good compo component of the, at least the Shia uh, coordination framework has expressed acceptance of al-Sudani's ideas, which is really good. And then, it, then they say that it's become clear that Iraq is more cohesive, cohesive now than before and that they um, are heading towards a major and important economic movement in the region. I like the word they use, major, because you're gonna see that in other articles today and to, uh, from some tweets even that uh, talk about when they use the word major, and they use the words formal. So look, the landscaping that we see changing almost every day now the uh, economic changes in Iraq are just going faster and faster. Relationships change from the way they were over 20 years ago uh, to where they are today. We just have not seen what we're seeing today that we had 20 years ago. So all you guys that really have been in it for 20 years and see that this is kind of a blah, blah situation, 
I think you better get focused because the balance of their economic relations with the United States, the strategic Gulf states, Iraq is looking to be unified with, and then many other countries on bilateral levels around the world. Uh, you're going to see more changes taking place, and you're going to see them quite quickly. And basically, one is a new one of them is going to be a new mechanism for the way they do dollar trades on the FITR, which we talked about, an electronic cash sale platform. Okay, so they they're going to do some of that stuff, and they're going to get started because they had to have some of that stuff done on what day? Yesterday. And when when do they go um, have this new mechanism? They're going to expose if they say per the central bank on. Sunday, the 14th of July. That's what the central bank says. And that I have right here um, to sh share. Um, activity transactions on the FITR platform. This it was two days ago. What are they gonna do? They're gonna start they're gonna start selling dollars to travelers next week. New procedures for transfers in Iraq. It goes on to say that the Iraq government banks will be start selling US dollars to travelers starting next week, according to the procedures approved by the Central Bank of Iraq. Probably got some UST in the background on that, of course. It says a source indicated that the dollar will be delivered to travelers through outlets of government banks located at the airports. All right. And they go on to say that they did this back, they decided this on July 4th, um, et cetera, et cetera. It, um, my view was that the central bank in a circular mentioned that the exchange companies would need to have all their work done by what? Yesterday. And I put that out a couple of days ago, and so that on the 14th next week, they can be ready for this. Iraq's 14th is next week, is Sunday. That's how they, that's how they roll. Uh, one of the snippets basically says this new mechanism for delivering travelers to dollars came out on the 4th, um, which will it um, enter into force on July 14th. Enter into force. That came from the central bank specifically. And then there's more to it. There's this study that I told you about. Uh, it comes from um, Ariel and Goldilocks. I have to say, well done. Uh, they talk about exchange traded funds. They talk about investment mechanisms, currency swaps, hedging currency risk, currency swaps effectively that create synthetic local currency denomination, denominated bond covering. Um, I mean, many things, okay? So take a peek at that and um, enjoy because they, they went to a lot of work to, to get that done. Um, you can see also that the Republic of Iraq, the central bank, um, has basically published um, on the 10th that the exchange companies uh, A and B, different sources, and mediation companies in buying and selling foreign currencies, category C, activity transactions, key point, um, on the FITR. So basically, it says if you want to have um, and register your company's uh, activity transactions, you need to do the do so quickly and uh, within their time frame. Um, but it will require real time registration. So today's the twelfth. Let's see what they do. Let's see how this works out for them. Let's see how it works out for us. And I think it's going to be amazing. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about tonight is going to be a, um, a tweet. And what is it from? It's in re reference to the working uh, or the World Trade Organization Working Party meeting July 18th after 16 years. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, tweet that came out from Meika Oshikawa. Okay, she tweeted out. At Iraq's working party will be formally resumed on 18 July after 16 years. Had a productive prep meeting with Baghdad's team in advance of their arrival in GVA or Geneva. They're glad to see that their readiness and excitement for the, this historic meeting and they're grateful for the dedication and hard work of the Iraqi team. So my view, this meeting is talking about a session. The language that she's used or they used is powerful. It really is. When using the word formally, it's an official statement. That's how I see it. And if you look at the definition, it's an official statement. Uh, the statement of Iraq's readiness and excitement, readiness and excitement <clears throat> is what to be, to be what? A historic event. 
This meaning apparently to be in Geneva and not in Iraq. Let that sink in, you guys. Historical and official work. Okay, so that working party meeting may have exactly this. Be uh, formally, they're going to be formally resumed on the 18th, means it's important, and that there is readiness and excitement for this historic meeting. You don't use language like that if it's not a big deal. So we're going to see if they have a, an announcement. Now, if you remember back, I believe it was on December 26, 2023. I think it was Soleil who said, the advisor, that to watch for a major announcement. I'm fairly certain that this could be a key point and to be aware of it. Look, the amount of convergences now that are in underway, there's just no coincidences with all the things that we're talking about. They're all lining up and coming into a, to a, uh, a quicken, if you will. There are to be many things happening around um, these time frames that these guys in these articles are telling us. It's not ones we're pulling out of a hat. They're talking about specific time frames, right? They're going to say you have to have paperwork in on the 7-11-2024. Uh, why? Because the mechanism begins on when? 7-14. They're going to have a, a meeting with on the 18th, which is supposedly going to be formal. It's going to be historic, right? The foreign minister is in Washington. He's talking to who? The United States Treasury. Ernst & Young is working to merge, what, two Iraqi banks, state banks, in the private sector, and then more, right? You guys... Look, all of these little bits and pieces are coming together, and we're showing you that here with Militiaman and crew. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what um, our dear Samson brings in to the newsroom tomorrow morning and over the weekend and into next week because it's just, it should be powerful. It's already powerful. I think everybody should really realize that the value you get with patreon.com forward slash mm and crew is real. And please, everybody, if you'd like, Come join us, check out Militia Man's chat room in Discord, and uh, be welcomed by Gigi, she helps out. Pompey Peter's been hanging around, doing audios. Petra, he's been showing up regularly. So come on in and check it out. See what we have to offer. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.